Arrows of Grace singing Bloodline. And we'd like to welcome all of you to the Mount Pleasant Bible Institute video podcast for Monday, January 11th, 2021. Wow. A lot has happened since the last time we got together back on December 7th of 2020. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in our Current Events in Bible Prophecy podcast. We'll, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. But uh, we, again, we want to thank the Arrows of Grace for that wonderful number as we continue to play uh, music from our Fall 2020 Revival for you uh, during the Mount Pleasant Bible Institute video podcast. And if you notice, we did play the song at the beginning of the video as opposed to in between the first and second hour. We started doing this uh, pretty much right after the fall revival. And uh, the reason that we're going to continue doing that this is uh, because we're going to be doing separate recordings for each of the two hours. Some of you have asked us why are you splitting things up. Uh, a couple of reasons why things have split up rather than having a single Monday night video. Uh, the first thing is is that in light of everything that's been going on over the past uh, three months, uh, three months, uh, two, two to three months with the censorship that's taking place on social media, we are trying to make as much of a of a move as we can off of Facebook. Now, we're restricted in some way there simply because uh, we do post the video uh, for these classes on the church Facebook page and the church is, in my understanding right now, currently limited in what we can do as far as our Facebook options. Uh, Facebook is the social media platform that has live streaming. So uh, we will need to stay on Facebook to continue to post these videos on the church Facebook page. But we are also posting these videos on other media platforms. Okay, uh, We're posting it to Rumble, which is the conservative uh, free speech alternative to YouTube. We're going to be posting it to USA.life, which is a Christian conservative uh, alternative to Facebook. We're also going to be posting to MeWe and possibly, if we can, posting to Parler. We'll look into that. But absolutely, Rumble, MeWe, and USA.life. So any one of those platforms, as well as the Mount Pleasant Bible Institute website, and you see the web address there on the screen, all the videos will be available there as well. Um, so the separate videos are simply because you have uh, file size limitations um, on those other platforms that you don't have on Facebook currently. You know, Facebook, we can just do the full two hours, complete, single recording, and load it up and done. Um, that file size is just too big for these other platforms as they're currently constructed, so we've had to break it up. We want to keep bringing you the good music, so we put it at the front end instead of in the middle. So there's a reason for that. Now, before we get into our lesson, uh, format change. Format change. Uh, we completed the book of Joshua, as you all know, who've been studying with us on Monday nights. We completed the book of Joshua as we broke for Christmas last December, and we've been going through... Our intention is to study the Old Testament history books straight on through. And so as we've completed Joshua, next up is, of course, the book of Judges. So that is exactly where we're going to be in our first hour. We'll be studying the book of Judges verse by verse. Previously in our second hour, we've been devoting that um, to the scriptures. The first hour previously had been current events in Bible prophecy. Well, we're going to be moving that to its own separate video. Okay, In our second hour, we'll be studying the Gospel of Matthew, verse by verse. Okay, 
did some praying about that, and we'll talk more about the reason why we've separated current events in Bible prophecy from the actual Monday Night Bible Institute class when we put that recording up on Tuesday night, okay? Um, so be looking for both of the Bible Institute recordings here. They're going to be available again on Monday nights, and that'll be at 7 o'clock, and that'll be first hour Judges, second hour Matthew, and uh, we'll be putting up the recording for current events in Bible prophecy. That'll be Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. And again, we'll talk more about the reason for making a separate recording uh, when we come to you on Tuesday night. So Judges and Matthew are what we're going to be studying here tonight. So I hope that uh, answers those questions on where we're headed. Uh, as far as class schedule coming up for this semester, uh, we do have the King James Bible Conference at Rich Fork Baptist Church uh, scheduled right now for February 21st through the 23rd. So I know right now that pending the conference stays on, that we will not be having Bible Institute classes on Monday. February 21st. Outside of that, I'm not aware of anything on the church calendar as of now. Um, so we'll just bring all of those uh, to you as we become aware of them. Any type of scheduling changes. Other than that, we're going to be with you each Monday night at 7 o'clock. And folks, we need each other. We need the Word of God. Um, boy, what a mess. What a mess our country and our world are in. And uh, as I mentioned in Sunday school, um, we have the answer though. Uh, we have no reason to mope because we have the blessed hope, okay? And the people around us out there in the, in the lost world, um, especially those now who are conservative, uh, they're devastated and they're, they're upset, they're angry and understandably so. Uh, but they, they can't, can't be, be turning, turning to alcohol and drugs and violence. Um, they, they can't, can't be, be doing, doing that. that. We have the answer. We've always had the answer. And so uh, one thing that we'll continue to remind ourselves of and anybody else we can is the urgency and the importance of the hour in which we're living. We, we need to witness to people like we never have. So. Before we jump into our study, let's go to the Lord in a quick prayer, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the honor and privilege that we have to study your word together here tonight. We thank you for each one that has taken time out of their daily schedule to listen to the teaching of your word. And Father, I'm not anything, I'm not anyone. I'm just a vessel here tonight, I'm just an instrument, and I'm surrendering myself to you, Lord, that you just take me and... and Put me in your hands, Lord. And uh, just like any broken instrument in the hands of the master musician, Lord, you can make a sweet sound out of it. And I pray that tonight, Lord, as your people come to you looking for, for something from you, that you just use me to play a sweet melody to your people and teach them from your word here tonight in Judges and Matthew. And you know exactly what they need to hear, Lord. You know where people are in their lives and their walk with you right here, right now. And just pray you'd bring out exactly what needs to come out tonight, Lord, and help us to ever sense the urgency of the hour in which we live and help us not to give in to fret or to fear, uh, but ever have the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. May we live by faith and walk by faith, Lord, in these perilous times. May we exhort one another so much the more since we see the day approaching. Give us all opportunities in light of all of the restrictions with this pandemic, Lord, to still be able to present the gospel to people that we plant, we sow, we water with our prayers. We do what we can and look for those opportunities and give us the boldness to speak up and out for you, Father. We pray for every lost family member represented by those watching and listening and pray that they would come under Holy Ghost conviction and be saved before it's eternally too late. Help us. Uh, if we can be, Lord, to be that person who wins that other's lost relative to you, Lord. If they can't reach him, if we can, use us, Lord. And we just pray now for your blessing on our study 
and on our country, Lord. We pray for our leaders to be saved, and we pray that you have mercy on America. Things have happened the way they have because it's your will, Lord. We don't understand it, but we know we can trust you. And so, Lord, we know you're also going to provide everything we need in the days ahead, as you always have. And it doesn't matter who's uh, so-called in charge of this country. You're in control of the universe. And so, Father, we look to you and pray that you would give us uh, a glorious uh, uh, harvest, Lord, in these last days uh, before you come. And we do pray you come soon, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I said quick prayer, but that was probably quick for me. All right, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to the book of Judges, chapter 1. Judges, chapter 1. Judges 1. And uh, we're probably not going to get into uh, any of the verse-by-verse -verse study here tonight because we got a pretty lengthy introduction to give you on the book of Judges. So just sit back. If you're taking notes, feel free to take notes. We'll have some notes up on the uh, the slides though as well some of the more lengthy things to write lists and so forth okay uh, so let's get started right into it on the book of judges let me give you some statistics first on the book of judges uh, the book of judges is the sixth book of the bible sixth book of the bible interestingly enough count it up j u d g e s Six letters in Judges. Six is the number of man. So very interesting there. And uh, the book of Judges, when, when you think about us just coming off of the book of Joshua, we taught you that in the book of Joshua you have really the, the Old Testament equivalent of the New Testament book of Ephesians, where Joshua is describing the conquest of Canaan, and Ephesians really gives us the insight on spiritual warfare and the victorious Christian life. And so in the book of Joshua, you see the physical representation or typology of all of the spiritual conflict and victory that we experience in our Christian life. Joshua, a type of Christ, the children of Israel, a type of the church, the collective body of Christ, and how if we follow the commands of our general, the Lord Jesus Christ, every place the sole of our foot shall tread upon shall be ours. And in fact, that same principle is repeated in Luke chapter 10, I believe it's in verse 19, where the Lord said he would give us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and, and uh, over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. The precondition to all of that is being obedience, being in obedience to the word of God. The moment we do the uh, go against the word of God and sin, all bets are off, okay? Um, and that's what we see in the book of Joshua when the children of Israel disobeyed Joshua's commands, which were coming straight from God. Uh, we saw that they weren't able to get complete victory, right? So now in the book of Judges, we're going to see these consequences, the consequences of obedience and disobedience, not in warfare, but in walk. Um, to they're they're highlighted they're amplified okay and we're going to see that so when God's people are disobedient what are the consequences of that when God's people are obedient what are the consequences of that the book of judges is all about that right there all right um, some other statistics judges has 21 chapters 618 verses 18,000 966 words. Don't know if we, let's check out the slides here. Do we, do we have the, uh, there we go. That's what we're looking for right there. There's your statistics so you don't have to remember in writing them all down. There you go right there. Um, I'll give you a little bit of time to write that down. <clears throat> and as you can see on the slide, we also have a key verse. We have a key phrase, okay? The key verse is Joshua 20, I'm sorry, Judges. I almost said Joshua. Judges 21, 25. That says, In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And the key phrase is right there in that key verse, which is 
there was no king in Israel. That phrase appears four times in the book. It appears in chapter 17, verse 6, chapter 18, verse 1, chapter 19, verse 1, and then uh, in the key verse of the book, chapter 21 and verse 25. And the phrase implies that uh, there, there was a king at the time the book was written. Okay, um, So that gives us insight as to who the potential author is. So we've given you the chapters, verses, and words. So next up is the author, and we think it's Samuel. We don't know for certain because there's nothing inside the book that gives us anything definitive. Nothing at the beginning, nothing at the end. Um, but we, uh, we get the implication that it is Samuel. As we said, uh, there's the implication that there was a king at the time it was written. It couldn't have been written much, uh, much longer after the time of the judges. Uh, it may, in fact, have been written during the tail end of the time of the judges. More on that in a minute. Um, so we say Samuel because, as we'll see in a moment, Samuel was the last official judge of Israel. And what happened during Samuel's life was not only was he the last official judge, but he also anointed Israel's first king, didn't he, when he anointed King Saul. Um, so if Samuel's the author, and he wrote it sometime after 1 Samuel 9 and 10, um, when Saul became king, then it makes sense that there was a king at the time that the book of Judges was written, yet written by a judge, Samuel, even though he's not one of the judges mentioned inside the book of Judges itself. He's not the absolute choice, because again, we don't know for certain who the author is, but he certainly is logical choice. Okay. Um, so if indeed Samuel's the author, we're going to say it's written probably sometime around 1080 BC. Uh, Samuel lived till uh, about 1060 BC. So we're going to say it was written about 1080 BC. Again, that's nothing set in stone there. Okay. Um, the book of Judges derives its name from the 12 people the Lord raised up during the times of declension and apostasy that followed the death of Joshua. And these 12 people delivered Israel from oppression. So think of these judges as deliverers. Deliverers, because that's exactly what they did. That's what distinguishes them in this book. God used them as instruments of deliverance for his people um, in times of declension, apostasy, and in off times they were being oppressed by enemies round about Israel. Now, as we look at the book of Judges, and what I want to do here, because I noticed we had some additional slides previous here, so don't want you to think we're skipping over them and you're missing something. Um, <clears throat> but turning your attention to this particular slide, this is the, the, the next two slides here that we're going back and grabbing here are the same ones we showed you when we studied the book of Joshua. Just to show you the, the place within the canon that the history books occupy. So here you see the five major divisions of our Old Testament. Uh, you have the law, or what it's called, the Pentateuch. Then you have the history books, which is uh, where Joshua and Judges um, are situated. And then you have the wisdom books, the major prophets and the minor prophets. Okay, So what we've been studying the history books. Uh, then you have the divisions of the Hebrew Bible, the Tanakh, the Tanakh, and uh, judges like Joshua occupies uh, a portion of four books along with Samuel and Kings in what's known as the former prophets. The, the word Tanakh is an acronym for the three sections of the Hebrew Bible. The T for Torah, which aligns with our Pentateuch, the first five books, Genesis through Deuteronomy. The N stands for the Navim, um, which is the prophets. And the prophets consists of the former prophets, the four we just mentioned, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings. And then the latter prophets, which include 
what we know as uh, the major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. Uh, it does not include Daniel, but it includes the 12 minor prophets. Okay, And then the K in Tanakh stands for the Ketuvim, also pronounced Kethubim, depending on who's doing the pronouncing. Um, and this is what's called the writings. And it consists of the poetical books, the five roles, as you see up there, and the historical books. And that's where they place Daniel, by the way, in the historical books as opposed to the prophets. All right, so just want to make sure that you knew we weren't keeping something from you. We saw these slides when we studied Joshua, and uh, so we'll repeat it here for judges. Okay? Um, <clears throat> we'll get to this uh, cycle thing you see here in just a moment. But first we, we want to remark that you need to make a distinction between the time period that's covered in the book of Judges, which is about 305 years, roughly from 1425 B.C. following the death of Joshua, to 1120 B.C., which is going to put you... Um, at the time of Ruth, basically. Um, so a distinction needs to be made between that time period and the actual time period of the judges themselves. And when I say judges, I'm not just talking about the 12 that are mentioned by name in the book of Judges. Because there's individuals who judged Israel who aren't mentioned in the book of Judges as being judges, okay? The time period of the book of Judges is 450 years, and we learn this from the book of Acts. In Acts 13, and verse, uh, beginning in verse number 19, it says, And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And of course, the one who was on point for the Lord to do that was Joshua. But then in Acts 13, 20, it says, And after that, so after the land was divided up, which we studied in Joshua, after that he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years. So the time of judges lasted 450 years until Samuel the prophet. So the period of the judges either ended with Samuel or it ended right before Samuel. So we're going to give you a couple of theories on this 450 years. But again, just to make a distinction, um, 450 years of time is not covered in the book of Judges. It's just 305 years. Okay. The total uh, amount of years involved in the time of the judges is 450 years. Um, now we said that the 12 judges that are given by name in the book of Judges weren't the only ones who judged Israel. The very first person that is said to have judged Israel is Moses, actually. In Exodus chapter 18... And uh, verse number 13, so this follows the exodus from Egypt, so we're in around about 1491 B.C. And it says in Exodus 18, I'll begin reading in verse 12, And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God. And Aaron came and all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. So Moses is the first one said to be a judge, if you will, of Israel. And that is 1491 B.C. Now as we read uh, from the uh, book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 20, it said there uh, that, the, the, that the Lord gave them judges for 450 years until Samuel the prophet. Now, Samuel also judged Israel. 
and he judged Israel all the days of his life. So in 1 Samuel 7 and verse number 6 it says, And they gathered together at Mitzbah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mitzpah. 1 Samuel 7, verse 15 and 16 says, And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel and Gilgal and Mitzpah and judged Israel in all those places. And then in 1 Samuel 12 and verse number 11, and the Lord sent Jerub, uh, Jerubbaal and Bedan and Jephthah and Samuel and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side and you dwelt safe. So here's a listing of some of the judges. Okay, And Samuel is included in that listing. And note there in 1 Samuel 12, 11, these judges are deliverers. It says, And the Lord sent Jerubbaal and Bedan and Jephthah and Samuel and delivered you. So Samuel was the last official judge. And as we mentioned earlier, Samuel dies, since he, he judged Israel all the days of his life, he died around 1060 B.C. So let's do the math here from first judge to last judge. Moses is the first one who is said to have judged Israel. He begins judging there in Exodus 18, and it's 1491 B.C. Samuel, the last judge, is said to have judged Israel all the days of his life. He dies in 1060 B.C. Let's find the difference there. How many years are we talking about? We're talking about 431 years, so not quite 450, okay? but close, so it's approximate. So that's one theory on what the 450 years constitutes. It could be from the first judge Moses to the last judge Samuel, okay? Um, now, more specifically, and I find this very interesting, and this is where it's gonna get a little meaty. We have a chart that we're gonna show you here in a moment. So just bear with me. Um, so we know that Moses was the first one to judge Israel. Um, then, of course, his successor is Joshua. We just studied the book of Joshua, and Joshua uh, was Israel's leader. No doubt that he also uh, judged the children of Israel after Moses. Following the death of Joshua, then, we pick up here in the book of Judges, and you have, as we'll see, a total of 12 people given by name as judges uh, in Israel. So these 12 judges judged Israel, for, and they'll range from the first one we'll study, which is Othniel, to the last one that we'll study, which is Samson. But then after Samson, you have Eli. Following the book of Judges, going into 1 Samuel, you have the priest Eli, okay? And he also judged Israel. How do we know this? From 1 Samuel 4 and verse 18. This is at Eli's death. It says, And it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that he, speaking of Eli, fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck break, and he died. For he was an old man and heavy, and he had judged Israel 40 years. So remember that. That's Eli, and Eli is said to have judged Israel, and he judged them for 40 years. Remember that, okay? Well, who picked up the mantle, as it were, after Eli's death? Well, it, we know from 1 Samuel that it would be Samuel, and Samuel was the last judge. So what's interesting is that the total number of years of servitude that we're going to see here in the book of Judges. The total number of years that the book of Judges says that Israel was specifically oppressed and in servitude to other nations. If you take those total number of years and add to that the total number of years that the book of Judges specifically says that the land had peace, and we'll see that repeatedly as well, add those two together, 
Then add in the three years that we'll see from Judges 9.22 that Abimelech ruled. Some people make uh, Abimelech one of the judges. Abimelech, as we'll see, was not a judge. He was a king. He was a self-imposed king. Okay, So he didn't judge. He actually ruled. But he ruled for three years. He's a type of the Antichrist. So you add those three years that he ruled, plus the 40 years I just mentioned that Eli, that Eli judged Israel, and you know what you get? 450 years. 450 years. Just a minute, and we're going to show you a chart that breaks it all down. Okay? So just hang tight. As we go through our study of Judges, we're going to see that none of the seven servitudes that are mentioned impacted all 12 tribes. So it was more local, more regional, okay, as opposed to national in scope. Um, we're also going to see that the, uh, the five periods of peace, well, I, let me backtrack, there are five periods of peace, not all the periods of peace, but five of them that have no preceding years of servitude or mention of any oppressing nation. Because usually what we'll read is that there's an oppressing nation. Israel, or I'm sorry, the Lord raises up a judge or deliverer to deliver them from that oppressor. Then there's peace. Okay. Well, there's five periods of peace under the judgeships of Tola, Jair, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. Those five judges specifically and their associating periods of peace where there is no corresponding servitude or oppressing nation that preceded their judgeships. Now, because of that, because not all of the servitudes impacted all the 12 tribes, and we've got these five periods of peace that didn't have any preceding servitude or oppressing nation mentioned, that leads me to believe that it's possible that some of these judges, that they were judging uh, in Israel concurrently. In other words, even though they're given to us in succession in the book in order to you know, tell the story, that doesn't mean that one judged immediately after the other or necessarily after the other at all. It could be that some of these judges judged concurrently with one or more of the others. Now, to what extent that occurred, do not know, but it is possible. So the 450 years mentioned in Acts 13.20 could just simply be the sum total of the years involved here in the book of Judges and not necessarily 450 successive years from Moses to Samuel. Okay, I hope that makes sense. hope that makes sense. Now before we get to the chart, let me just say this because we're on the the cycle here that you've been looking at for about 10 minutes now. Uh, the time of the judges is characterized by this continuous cycle that you're looking at on the screen right now. You start with rejoicing. God's people rejoicing. Everything's good. They're on the mountaintop. And then you get uh, some people getting away from the Lord. And then more people get away from the Lord. And it's like a virus. It's contagious. And then more people get away from the Lord. And it goes from being backslidden, not getting right, to just downright apostasy. People start worshiping other gods. Just flat out rebellion and a lack of repentance. And because of that, you've got retribution. You've got the Lord bringing judgment upon his people, oftentimes in the form of these oppressing nations okay, and servitudes that go with it. During that time, things get really bad for God's people, and they cry out to the Lord in repentance, right? And it's during that time the Lord hears their cries, and he raises up these deliverers, these judges, who are instruments in the hand of God to deliver his people 
in those times of declension and apostasy and oppression. And that's where we get to the fifth stage, restoration. And uh, so they're free from the servitude, they're, and everything's good, and they go from that stage back to rejoicing. And then they get out of fellowship with God and rebel and go into apostasy, worshiping false gods, and the cycle just goes over and over and over again. And this cycle is actually summarized for us in the book of Judges itself, in Judges 2, verses 14 through 19, where it says, And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord. But they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. And verse 20 says, And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And so you see this continuous cycle. Rejoicing, rebellion, retribution, repentance, restoration. Rejoicing, and so on. It's just repeated throughout the book. <clears throat> now, I want to get back to, in comparing this with the, uh, with the book of Joshua with the book of Joshua. And Joshua, again, we learned about spiritual warfare and how the promises of God are sure that if we are in obedience to the Lord, victory is assured. Every place the sole of our foot shall, the sole of our foot shall tread upon shall be ours. If we submit ourselves to the Lord, get behind uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, that he be our armor, he be our general, we stay submitted to him continuously, we can't lose, because Christ can't lose, okay? The moment we get out of rank, the moment we sin, forget it. Defeat is assured. And it's not the Lord's fault, it's our own, because we didn't stay in line, right? We got out of line, we got out of rank. Uh, we didn't follow our commander. Now the book of Judges, as I said, amplifies or highlights, emphasizes these truths. The truth that if you are obedient to the Lord, good things are going to happen. All right, There's going to be victory. If we're obedient to the Lord, uh, the consequences, the results are going to be the same. When we disobey the Lord, when we rebel against him, guess what? The results are going to be the same. Uh, bad things are going to follow. Uh, judgment, chastisement is going to come eventually. It may not come exactly uh, the same time every time, but and it may not come in the same form, but it's going to come. All right. So in the book of Judges, this endless cycle gives us the assurance of the constancy and the consistency of our God. Because uh, we see here that every time that Israel disobeys the Lord and gets away from the Lord and embraces other gods, they never get away with it. Their prosperity, their rejoicing never holds. They fall, okay? And so will we. Every time we, we get away from the Lord, if we don't get that thing right, if we stay out of fellowship with God, um, the same thing's going to happen every time, and it's not good. But every time Israel repented, and called out to God and truly put away their sin and did the best they could to make things right with God, they meant it in their hearts, the Lord always forgave them and always restored them, even though 
This cycle kept repeating. You see, if that were us, we'd be like, listen, how many times we got to play this game? How many times we got to go through this? All right, I'm done forgiving you. How's that? That's how we would be. That's not how God is. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. What a God. We thank the Lord. So uh, some final thoughts now before we get to, I promised you the chart. We're going to give you that chart. Um, the book does include seven apostasies and seven servitudes to oppressing nations, seven deliverances, as well as the 12 judges that we'll be covering. The last five chapters of the book, chapters 17 through 21, along with the book of Ruth that we'll study after Judges, shows the spiritual and moral conditions that existed during the time of the Judges. You see, the, the book of Judges is the book of no king. Remember, there, there was no king in Israel. Okay, In contrast, the book of 1 Samuel is the book of man's king, referring to Saul. And also in contrast to 2 Samuel, which is the book of God's king, referring to David. Okay. All right, so let's now take a look at this chart here. Here's this chart that I've been promising you, and I'm going to leave this up, okay? The only thing we have left to cover here today, and I think we're just going to wait until next Monday night to cover it, is the outline of the Book of Judges. We'll, we'll start there next week. So I do have one for you. We'll just we'll cover it to start our lesson next Monday night because we're, we're pretty much out of time. But I want to leave this chart that you're looking at up up there for you to look at for a while. And you can see we're going to go through this here and show you where those 450 years we mentioned comes from. So we said that it's the summation of these, these uh, years of servitude right here. Okay, So not every one of these 12 judges here that are mentioned in Judges from Othniel to Samson we don't always have years of servitude associated with them, okay? Uh, we don't always have years of peace associated with them. Uh, they're not necessarily mentioned, okay? So where there is number, where there is numbers given, like here for Othniel, eight years of servitude, 40 years of peace, add up all these numbers here, eight, 40, 18, 80, and so on, all the years of servitude, and the years of peace for these 12 judges. Then add in, as we said, the three years that Obimelech, right here, see we don't have Abimelech listed as a judge because he was a king, not a judge, but here's those three years of servitude, right, right there under Abimelech's rule. And then add in there these 40 years of Eli's judgeship, okay? You add that all together, you're going to see that you have 114 years in this column of servitude. So 8 plus 18 plus 20 plus 7 plus 3 plus 18 plus uh, 40. Uh, yeah, 114. The years of peace, 40 plus 80 plus 40 plus 40 plus 23 plus 22 plus 6 plus 7 plus 10 plus 8 plus 20 plus 40. 336. 114 plus 336 equals 450. And we didn't even touch Samuel because Acts 13.20 says until Samuel the prophet. There's 450 years. See that? Nice, huh? Works out. So we leave that up there. If you're interested, I, I think you sh you could probably snip this on your screen if you want to get a copy of that. If you want a hard copy of this otherwise, um, let me know. Send me an email, send me a message somehow. If you want this, we'll get it to you somehow. Just let me know. But other than that, we're going to have to stop there for our study in Judges today. Uh, we hope that that's been a blessing to you. And uh, we will pick up, as I said, looking at the outline for the book of Judges and getting into our actual verse-by-verse -verse study next Monday. 
So we hope you're able to stay tuned for our second hour. We're going to take a break now for, for a bit, and uh, we'll be back with a verse-by-verse -verse study of Matthew. So thank you for joining us for Judges.